Good evening. Welcome to all and to those visiting us today. Would you please stand and join in song? today for the fourth Sunday of Ordinary Time. So a warm welcome to everyone as we begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Friends, we hear a very well-known gospel today, very well-known, but one that asks a lot of you and me, a gospel that's difficult to live out every day when a lot of other things get in our way. So we ask the Lord's grace today in helping us to embrace it and to live out the Beatitudes today. Lord Jesus, you bless those who are peacemakers. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you comfort those who experience sorrow. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you satisfy those who thirst for life. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Amen.
us, Lord our God, that we may honor you with all of our mind and love everyone in truth of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever, amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Zephaniah. Seek the Lord, all you humble of the earth, who have observed his law. Seek justice. Seek humility. Perhaps you may be sheltered on the day of the Lord's anger. But I will leave as a remnant in your midst a people humble and lowly, who shall take refuge in the name of the Lord, the remnant of Israel. They shall do no wrong and speak no lies, nor shall there be found in their mouths a deceitful tongue. They shall pasture and couch their flocks with none to disturb them. The word of the Lord. the orphan and the widow. 
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Consider your own calling, brothers and sisters. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. Rather, God chose the foolish of the world to shame the wise. And God chose the weak of the world to shame the strong. And God chose the lowly and despised of the world, those who count for nothing, to reduce to nothing those who are something, so that no human being might boast before God. It is due to him that you are in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God, as well as righteousness, sanctification, and redemption, so that as it is written, whoever boasts should boast in the Lord. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on the mountain, and after he had sat down, his disciples came to him. He began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. It was 37 years ago today that that space shuttle, Challenger, exploded 73 seconds after taking off at Cape Canaveral. It's believed that the seven people on board survived the explosion but died when their capsule hit the Atlantic Ocean. One of the memories that maybe you have, that I have, is a picture of the parents of Krista McAuliffe looking up in the sky, hoping that they were seeing something that was normal. 
as you, of course, remember, some of you at least, she was a school teacher, and she hoped to conduct a lot of experience on, experiments on board and then write about them for all the school classrooms of our country. She even took some M&Ms with her and some marshmallows for an experiment in weightlessness for a video for all the classrooms. The astronauts had just been told to throttle up, and as they did that, it exploded. And this is what President Reagan said that day. We've grown used to the idea of space, but we've just begun. We are pioneers. There is so much more to learn. If you look in your Webster Dictionary and you look up the word pioneer, the first definition is this, a foot soldier, a foot soldier preparing the way for others. So in space, we are still preparing the way. We are still foot soldiers. But you know, in our church, they call you and me that too. Many theologians today say we are foot soldiers when it comes to our faith, when it comes to living out today's gospel about the Beatitudes that we heard today. We're still learning and we're still trying. The Beatitudes are a favorite with a lot of people in our congregations. Many select readings for funerals and for other occasions, and they so often choose the Beatitudes. They fit almost every occasion. And the Catechism of the Catholic Church describes the Beatitudes with this sentence, they are the heart of Jesus' preaching, right down to the core. They are the heart of all his preaching. Literally, we would find the Beatitudes difficult to live out and to accept, because if we just read them quickly, they seem to imply at first glance that to be poor or to be hungry or to be grieved, that these are good things. So what did he mean when he said things like, blessed are the poor? He was not speaking, of course, of someone who has little in life or little of this earth's goods. That was not his intention. He was referring to all of us developing a spirit of poverty, not allowing the quest for goods to consume us, that we have a healthy attitude about everything God has given us. So it calls for that healthy attitude on our part toward all we have, realizing as we get older especially that it's all on loan. Somebody else will have it someday. It's all on loan to us. So living that way, realizing that, we become poor in spirit. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst does not refer to physical hunger or physical thirst but a hunger and a thirst for holiness in our lives, a hunger and thirst for spiritual knowledge and a lot of growth as we get older. With that kind of hunger and thirst, we become people of service and people of compassion. If you and I have a deep hunger to know God and to know more with every passing year, to ponder his word and to live his word, then blessed are those who hunger and thirst describes you and me this afternoon. If we lament all the evil and suffering that there is in the world and strive in our own little way in our own town to do something about it, maybe praying about it, maybe at least being alert to it and not ignoring it, then blessed are those who sorrow and weep, describes you and me this afternoon. If you and I promote peace and justice in our home that we just left, in our workplace on Monday morning, in our community where we live, then blessed are the peacemakers, describes you and me today. No wonder our church calls the Beatitudes the heart of Jesus' preaching. And no wonder you and I are still foot soldiers in trying to live them out for there's a long way to go yet in bringing this into the world. So we're still pioneers, too, in the Christian faith. We are still foot soldiers, preparing the way for others to come, preparing for a better world. 
37 years ago already, an experiment ended in 73 seconds. The nation pledged to go on with its pioneering work. 2,000 years ago, another teacher told us how to live every day of the week. And we are pioneers who keep trying, who never give up, for we know the truth of all those words. The word in Webster's Dictionary, at least in mine, that follows the word pioneer is the word pious. Pious, meaning manifesting a devotion to God. What better way to do that than to embrace the words like, blessed are the poor in spirit, blessed are the peacemakers, blessed are the lowly, blessed are those who hunger and thirst, all part of the Sermon on the Mount, all part and at the heart of Jesus' preaching. And so let's remember, too, the, the words that conclude the Beatitudes today. We sang it just a few minutes ago in the responsorial psalm. It concludes with beautiful words for we pioneers, for we foot soldiers. Be glad and rejoice, for your reward in heaven is great. faith together. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. In faith, we bring our prayers and our needs now to the Lord. in the church to seek the blessedness of the kingdom, showing mercy to others and being people of peace. Hear us, we pray. For the many people who hunger and thirst for righteousness, those suffering from hatred, abuse, or violence, and those in Ukraine suffering from war and aggression. Hear us, we pray.
people down south where tornadoes and violent storms continue destroying people's homes, leaving so many families with nothing at all. Hear us, we pray. for all who minister in Catholic schools as they begin Catholic Schools Week. May God bless their work and guide all students in knowledge and grace. Hear us, we pray. for the safety of travelers on the roads and in the air, and for God's healing touch to come upon those suffering from any kind of illness. Hear us, we pray. For those who have not yet returned to Mass in person. For our homebound members joining us in prayer online. And for all those written in our Book of Intentions. Hear us, we pray. Let us pause for a moment and pray for those who have died. May their reward in heaven be great. Hear us, we pray. Loving God, hear the prayers we bring to you this afternoon for ourselves and for all those who are in need today. We bring them to you, our healer, our divine physician, through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the, may the Lord, Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. O Lord, we bring to your altar these offerings of our service. Be pleased to receive them, we pray, and transform them into the sacrament of our redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For just as through your beloved Son you created the human race, so also through him, with great goodness, you formed it anew. And so it is right that all your creatures serve you, all the redeemed praise you, and all your saints with one heart bless you. Therefore, we too extol you with all the angels and saints, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts of bread and wine, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Again, for relatives and friends who come to mind. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us share with one another a sign of the Lord's peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
ones who bear life's crushing debt. God's justice guides us yet within the reign of God. Let us pray. Nourished by these redeeming gifts, we pray, O Lord, that through this help to eternal salvation, true faith may ever increase. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Amen. May you have a very nice week ahead, and the Lord be with you. And And may Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Oh, Lord.